My name's Pete, and welcome to my laptop. Um, in fact, welcome to a guided tour of IRC. Uh, is anybody here actually on IRC right now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> um, all right, and so what has anybody here, is this your first time on IRC? No. Has it been a really long time since you've been on, on IRC? How much IRC do you get in your life? Is your, is your IRC life satisfactory? Um, IRC, <laughs> um, we're all getting on IRC. Okay. Yeah. You gotta tell me how, because honestly, I'm seriously an IRC newbie. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, I might be like the only one in the crowd that's actually like an IRC newbie. I have logged in before. Okay. I'm definitely not here. Like, I just really don't know what it is. Okay, awesome. Awesome. And so that's, I'm kind of glad, glad of that. So. Um. And I have some beer, so. Okay. Where's my IRC? And I'm going to use IRSSI. Is that cool? Yeah, if you remember how, sure. <laughs> Can you guys read? I was hoping you put it on the list, so I was hoping you'd tell me how. Oh, really? No, you're not. You're just screwing around with me, right? No, you put it on the list. I did. That was sort of sort of meant for people who were already using it. Uh, Erisi's nice, but very common. All right. Um. Um. All right. Uh, can anybody see that? the bottom, maybe. Can you see that? Yes. Awesome. All right. Great. So we're really going to set up here. So this is too big. Hi, and welcome to a guided tour of IRC. Um, my name is Pete Fine. Um, I wear pants. Uh, IRC, and what we're going to do this tour, is a old school multi-user chat. Um, and yeah, we've got a couple of people who have hung out around for a while and know how to use it. We've got some new people. And I'm actually recording this just so I can actually throw this up on some website or somewhere. And so kind of because it's sort of a mysterious topic. Um, so before there was Instant Messenger, there was Ooh. Sorry, this is going to look horrible. IRC. Um, basically, the similar sort of messages you can send over Instant Messenger, but uh, focused on group chat as opposed to person-to-person -person chat, um, and organized into what are called channels. So channels are basically a bunch of people talking together. Um, yeah, and so the, the history is long and boring and somewhat interesting, and it's kind of fairly technically simple. Um, it's just pure. Each message is a single line. It's terminated by a new line. Um, uh, and so fairly, fairly simple protocol. You can kind of implement it pretty easily over a socket. Um, but it allows for some kind of surprisingly complex user experience. Um, and so <laughs> that gives rise to some benefits and some problems, like attacks, like it's hard to actually keep these things up. And the, the culture that arises from this particular kind of network uh, has been interesting and unique, and it's been around for a long time. And there's all sorts of different norms and rules and subcultures and variants. And so yeah, it's um, pretty awesome. And so we're going to go take a tour. Uh, and so you need an, what is called an IRC client. Um, so if you're on Linux, here's some, here some clients. You can install some of these. Adium is an instant messenger. You might be using that already. It's a pretty popular client. Um, there's also, if you're feeling lazy, this web client called Mibit. 
mibit.com. We'll check that out. <laughs> It might not be doing free node. They show up. There's another, there's an IRC.freenode something. There's a free node IRC. Web chat. Python here. Let's try this. Sorry. Um, we'll come back to this later. Um, eh, maybe not. Ah, here we go, Python. OK, and so this is whatever. Um, there's also this thing, it's a web client. Great. Um, oh, great. Yeah, so basics, basics of IRC. When you log in, you might be here. All right, so this is what you see. So welcome, tells, welcome to the network, tells you what you can do. And so some basic commands to help you navigate around an IRC network. Slash list. So list and oh, yeah, let's not do that in Freenode. That'd be horrible. Forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> so the basic thing you want to do is you want to join a channel. So the channel we want to join is called OS Bridge. Hi. Oh, did you hit enter so you couldn't see? Oh, what I typed? Yeah. So I typed J OS Bridge. This is way harder to do decently. Yeah, and so channels are a little like hashtags. Channels are a little like hashtags on Twitter, except that they're more like a room than, than a tag you can follow because they're not public. If you're not in, in the room, you can't hear what's being said, whereas Twitter is just people shouting, shouting in kind of this one big room, the big giant room of the internet. Um, <laughs> and IRC is not like that. And so IRC has as many rooms for you to talk as you want. You can just make new ones. So we can join OS Bridge. We can join Pete is awesome. It's a new, new room to talk about how awesome I am. And surprising no one, the only person here is me. <laughs> and because you're there first. And because I'm there first, I'm an operator. And so and what do you do to create that? You just join it. Just join if you join a room, it makes the room. All right, you can join. Un pound a new room. You can you know? Could you talk a little bit about <coughs> when rooms are propagated and visible on which servers and which are the? I by default they use IRC free node. Sure. But there's so many. And so we'll get to we'll get to networks a little later. Okay. Um, right. And so what you may notice is that if you're the first person in a room, you have a little. You're what's called the operator. It's the operator, which I don't know if you can see here. Uh, my client shows up in this little green O. So I can op. You know, I, as an operator, I can grant other people op. And then you see there's another green O. You see there's another green O here. He's an op. And then I can take it away. <laughs> <laughs> and so since. And if he was quicker, he could have. Yeah, and so if he was quicker, he could <laughs> steal my op. Um, and so ops can do all sorts of interesting things, like it can set the topic. So you can yourself, and then there's an channel, right? Yes. And then you can't do anything, and it sucks. Right. <laughs> Until everyone leaves. Until everybody leaves, and that actually happened to me, unless uh, elsewhere. Um, and so ops can do things like they can set the topic, like. <laughs> like, I'm 12, what is this? That's a topic, or now the topic. Ends up at the top, right? And so your your client may do different things. And if you don't put anything after topic, it just shows it to you. Yeah. So that'll just show me what the topic was. And oh, and so I, oh, right. So this doesn't have topic protection by default. And so I forget how to turn that on. But yeah, you can make it so that like oh, how do you do? Here, here we go. <laughs> this is why you have a semi GUI client because you forget about that stuff. So no, the topic. Is now <laughs> topic is now in fact pants. Okay, um, and so these are the sort of things you can do as an op. You can also do things like um, who knows how to get back in? Who changed? Who set the topic before? Yeah. So Georgia, my topic. Goodbye. So you can just kick people out of the channel. 
You can do all, kind of all these different things. But and you can rejoice. Right, and so you can just come back. <laughs> <laughs> and so you can just come right back. Uh, and so this is how you deal with trolls. And so, um, <laughs> and so, right, this can kind of get various and more so chaotic and sort of the more you know, yeah, and there are occasionally trout and like, there's all sorts of weird IRC in jokes and kind of there's this whole culture that is built up, built up around kind of these tools. Um, and it's been around since like 93 that people have been using this and it's kind of never really taken off in the way the web took off because clients are a little more complicated and it's a little more, you know, green screen and old school and, um, but it's kind of cool and it's kind of cool and so you can have remarkably large conversations. So like if you join Ubuntu, Yeah, the hash is basically identifies channels. Yeah, there's nobody uses server local channels anymore. They're just yeah. So okay, Ubuntu. This is the support channel for uh, yeah, Ubuntu. Um, and there's like 1,200 people in here. I don't know. All right, and so this is basically the intro to the Ubuntu channel. And so yeah, there's I mean there's some huge huge numbers of people. Like look at this, like how much I'm scrolling and like there's just enormous numbers, numbers of people in here. And so you can come here and get official Ubuntu support. Um, and anybody have an Ubuntu question? No. Uh, all right. And so this dude apparently needs to know how to fix his VPN. Um, and so like you can just hop in this channel and ask a question and wait till somebody answers. Um, and if they don't answer, maybe you ask again, maybe you go look elsewhere. Um, and so all sorts of different topics. And so we are on uh, a network called Freenode. Freenode uh, is awesome. Uh, here we go. Freenode is this thing. Um, and basically it is an IRC network for open source. Um, so Python, Perl, because we like everybody, probably Ruby, all sorts of things, it's, right? It's kind of fun to have, like, start a channel when you're, like, at an event. Um, I went to Ubuntu Live years ago, and I was like, I wonder if there's an Ubuntu Live channel. And so I just, like, said, slash join Ubuntu Live. And then I ended up being the first person there, but then like within like 30 seconds, like someone else showed up. But then I had off. There you go. And so let's visit, in fact, the channel for this event, which is OS Bridge. And so I'm just going to use my GUI, but see if you can all get there. Um, can I get some power? So do you want to tweet about one for here right now? Okay. All right, go for it. Um, and so IRC is not Twitter. I can't emphasize that enough. IRC is not, <laughs> not Twitter. Really? Yes. <laughs> um, IRC is not Twitter. And so, yeah. Um, yeah, so who else is here? So. You're silly. Yeah, we can talk about net splits. Maybe we can experience a net split. And so, um, yeah. So read, and so a whole bunch of people. So right, a lot of planning for this conference went on here in IRC. Anyone here that's, yeah. Um, everybody feel like they have a decent idea so far? Okay, let's get interesting. Um, you can also talk to individual people. So the way you do that is with queries. So that's just a chat between me and Ruth. Hi, Ruth, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, Ruth, hi. Um, and so you can have as many of these as you want. All right. You know, I 
can talk to, I don't know, who else is around here? Right, all these different people. So I can talk to, oops, query me how, great. Right, and these just pop up, yo. And this is kind of where you have your private conversations. Right. Um, you, that's, oh, so you might notice down off in the corner here, Skype. <laughs> that's my Skype. IRC is also not Skype. And <laughs> IRC is different. And so there's similarities, and there's a lot of things that have been inspired by IRC and ripped off IRC, but these things are not IRC, and IRC is fundamentally different. Oh, yeah, so I'm just going to edit this. I'm just going to edit this video. So, um, like these people's phone numbers. How do they call? <laughs> <laughs> that number. Oh, yeah, no, don't call that number. <laughs> um, yeah. And say, have you seen my pants? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for my pants. Um, yeah, and so. <laughs> have, you, have you seen these pants? <laughs> yeah, IRC, and so, so. Let's talk about some things about IRC. And so Ruth here, hi. Hi. Ruth here is using her real name. And this is on Freenode. So Freenode is this open source IRC. It's really cool. Um, and so a lot of you, I guess, have been on Freenode. Yeah. Who's been on any other network at all? OK. All right, fine. Not in a long time. Not in a long time. Right. Yeah. And well, well, actually, I guess I'm yeah, there's FNet, and there's a there's so the other thing to know is we are on this network right now called Freenode, and so Freenode is a collection of servers, and it's also a collection of channels that exist and users who are connected and exist on those servers. There are multiple networks, and so unlike the web, which is entirely accessible kind of all together. There are these kind of little pools of servers that are off, <coughs> off on their own. Um, and these vary in size from very, very large, like Freenode, which has like 200,000 people or something like that, to stuff that's as small as five or six people. Um, yeah? It's still Freenode centralized, though, right? Like, uh, I mean, like, who is an organization like up? I mean, yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, so some of these can be just run on somebody's computer at home. You can run these on, you know, your laptop. You can. Yeah. Um, how many people are on it? A dozen. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And so. Yeah. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. Free beer. <laughs> free speech, dude. <laughs> free beer. Here, here in Oyster Bridge, we believe in both free beer and free speech. Um, That was a one-time IRC subculture. We'll talk about subculture. And so different networks. Different networks are a pool of servers that are talking to each other over plain sockets. A set of clients are talking to over plain sockets. And it's really just it's a line, it's a line protocol. It's a line-oriented protocol. Um, and so servers basically are centralized. They message pass, right? Like you would with a, like a, a queue. can't believe I'm explaining IRC servers with <laughs> queues. But like you have a pool of servers, and they just pass, pass these messages between them and then push them out to their locally connected clients. Um, and so you get the messages you know, for whoever else is attached to that physical network. Um, and so there can be organizations behind them that are, you know, nonprofits. There can be for profits like Red Hat that have run their own IRCs in internally. Um, and you can also just be a private dude or you can be none of these things and you just have an IRC network for your friends or you have an IRC network for a bunch of people who are interested in working on similar projects, whatever. Um, 
you know, GNOME has a separate IRC network. Mozilla has their own set of IRC networks. Um, we can join some of them if you want, but does the concept make sense, at least, of these kind of separate, separate ones? Should we join a normal one, like I Mozilla's IRC, before we go join on, exotic on ones? On You're on Pearl's IRC. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so the thing to remember about IRC is that different networks have different culture. That's a weird thing to think about in some ways. But there's just, just as there are different things you say over email than you say on your Facebook, or you say on your live journal that's friends locked than you say on your Facebook, there are kind of different things you say and kind of different ways you behave on different IRC networks. And so, yeah, and that when you kind of, particularly when you're coming from Freenode, which has this very open culture where everybody uses real names, like Ruth, and kind of real email addresses, and you don't have the kind of op wars that, you know, you see elsewhere. Um, you know, and it's very civil, and, you know. Uh, yeah, other places are less so, and other places have different norms and different kind of baseline expectations of behavior. And that can be confusing and, you know, can cause problems. In the same way that you have problems when you travel to a foreign country and you kind of make cultural faux pas. Make sense? Okay. Culture. Um, IRC has awesome culture. How do you find out what those are? Yeah, so like, <laughs> are you saying that free note is one single culture, or are you saying that even in each well, channel on where's there? Where's the lonely different. planet for IRC? So even with <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so there's, there's different little, vari I mean, it varies, right? So there's all these different kind of levels of control, and you have ops, and you have admins, and they all have kind of different privileges, the same way, you, you know, like any other privilege system, you know, in a web app or whatever, on what they are able to do in different channels and kind of things of that nature. Um, and so the way those get used in different places varies. And so in Freenode, right, I mean, most channels don't have ops. I mean, most channels, like OS Bridge, like probably has no ops. Is it for <laughs> So who's? So Freenode has what are called registered channels. You may have, when you signed on to Freenode, here, let's talk about NextServe, too. Oh, okay, we can do that. Uh, let's find this. <coughs> Messages are in, they show up in channel. They don't, don't open a query window, oh, really? basically. Yeah. They it depends on the wind. It depends on your client. It's just it's sort of. But it's still private message. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. They're listening. <laughs> um, and so maybe she messages back. All right, and so she writes it. Actually, I think I could demonstrate what he's asking. So, like, if we just go to a channel that auto opts you, like, if, all right, let me tell you, go to join uh, pawnbusinessgroup.com. Join. Now, watch when I come back, it's going to auto opt Oh, account. right, so she gets ops. And so there's this bot thing called ChanServe, which sort of can maintain your ops and kind of maintain the topic and sort of maintain, manage the permissions. It's a bot. Bots, IRC bots, I like bots. No colors allowed. Yeah, no colors. Some places let you have colors, some places don't. So, you know, all these silly little culture rules. IRC bot. Yeah. IRC bots, IRC bots are like a little interactive agent that hangs out in your channel and can parse basic commands given to it, right? It parses this basic little language. And there are different implementations, and some are run as part of the network. And so they do stuff for you. They do stuff for you like uh, look up the title of links. 
So if somebody pastes a URL in the channel, like you can have this little bot <laughs> that parses out the URL, does a head on, you know, does a you know, gets the page and pulls out the web page title and just says, "Foo," you know, here's the page title. Make sense? Well, that's a that's a service. Service services are a little different. Yeah. Um, commits. Oh, so a really popular one is, oh, I don't know, um, is you have an IRC bot that's hooked into your version control system, and when somebody makes a commit, it pastes a message to the channel. Google, Google, Google uses IRC internally. I mean, a lot of, it's, it's a very kind of old school, huh? No. Well, Perl uses it on the D10 channel. Yeah. And every single time somebody has a hook into the D10, if you want to join pound D10 right now. Oh, on Freenode? Yeah. Oh, okay, that's awesome. See, like, a bunch of D10 upload this package by whoever. Okay. Wow, we're getting late. We should, we should move on. And so there are these things called bots. Um, and so, yeah, we'll see more of this. Okay, so different networks. Let's get, so I promised excitement. I promised an entertaining tour around the IRC nets of the interwebs on the good crew. Like, like, yeah, and so before we get to that, let's talk, you know, um, I'm not gonna go straight to anonymous. I also work uh, on a network called Telecomics. So Telecomics looks like, ooh, that looks awesome, anyway. It's network called Telecomics. So IRC. So can we join that one? Yeah, you can join that one. And I can actually give you a web client, too. So this is the other cool thing. Um, gosh, why can I never find these when I need one? Here we go. So I can also give you this web URL to a client. Nick OSB. Here it is in the channel. OS bridge. Okay, and so can anybody see this? No, probably not. Yeah. Can you read that? That's way too long. So can I, here, I'll shorten it. <laughs> IRC is also not bitly, I don't know what that means. Hmm. That, is that any better? So this is this web client. So I'm going to connect as OS Bridge 95. Huh. Why did that work? Hmm. Erroneous nickname. Is that the same thing? It's a new one. Okay, we'll fix that. This link is now officially useless. You see that? Oh, no, this. If you go to that, you get this web client. <coughs> Great. Um, and so this is the same kind of client So you see I get this notification here. Because now I've got two clients. And so maybe I'm actually two people, which you don't know. And so this is the weird stuff that you can do, is that you can open multiple connections to servers. Right? And so on Freenode, just as a culture, we tend to be who we are. Right? We just show up, we use our real names. And so on other IRCs, people are more or less identifiable. And, yeah. Um, uh, IRC.telecomics.org, if you want to go directly there, which I should have done. Uh, pound OS Bridge. If you just joined. 
Yeah, I'm on there. Hi, OS Bridge. Did I tell him about SSL? No. So who else is here? Org. So what you're saying is on telecom X, you should be using a, an anonymous. The general culture is to use some anonymous. It, so on telecomics is it depends. And so we do both. We have some people who are, you know, use nicks and don't use real names. And we have some people who, use, I, you know, I use my real name, but I use my highly secret identity of no pants. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And so that's different from my usual uh, Nick. But when you switch back and forth, do you take Sam's off? It depends. <laughs> Hi. <coughs> Highly secret identity. Um, you know, like, uh, huh? Take Sam's off. Uh, I do sometimes, but not too often. Um, yeah. Uh, and so, yeah. And so it's mixed. And so it's, I'm a little tongue-in-cheek about it. Um, and so one of the interesting things is that, as a consequence of that, it's kind of considered rude to ask people personal details. It's like it's rude to ask people's real name. Because, yeah, just people use different handles. And so you know, if you do, there's this command called who is, which shows you information about the person you're connect, you know, in that channel. Um, it will tell you differing amounts of information about them. Names sometimes, stuff like that. And so you need to sort of know how to set up your client appropriately. That's a little more challenging than other times. And so that's why this web client is really nice. Is you just can log in and you don't have to think about it and the session goes away and it's gone. So other interesting norms and things that are different is, anybody log on Freenode? Anybody, do you even know if you have logs? Yeah? Yeah. Um, so a lot of other networks, logging is not cool. <laughs> logging is not cool. And so when I learned about this, I got told, and so logs are basically your client will write out to disk just everything that comes through it. Um, and so coming from Freenode, we do that all the time. You know, those logs are up on the web. Um, those logs are going in little search engines. Uh, other places is not cool. And so, yeah, people don't want their names showing up in, in logs. And so coming from Freenode, that's like a cultural difference. You ask, how do you know what the cultural norms are? And a lot of times you learn them the same way you would learn them traveling to a foreign country is when you fuck up. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, and so most other networks, you know, they will tell you, assume that you're being logged, don't keep logs yourself. And that's just because it's a politeness thing, right? If you, if, you know, you don't like being in logs, like, you know, don't, don't do it yourself, so. Can I ask a side question about that? Mm -hmm. I didn't look at them. They might be. It wouldn't surprise me. I, it just was weird because not very many people talked about them. Like I stumbled across them. Um, I mean, some. I mean, certainly some of the chat logs from HB Gary were. Yeah. 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 Um, and so we'll get to some more interesting places. And so just as you go different places, you need to know, know these different things. And that's a hard thing to learn. And so certain places are better than others about communicating you know, what those expectations are, what kind of software is available out there to help you live up to those expectations and also just sort of keep yourself anonymous or pseudonymous or sort of whatever degree of 
unidentifiability you want. Um, doing that is actually a lot harder than you would think. Um, doing that well is fairly, on the face of it seems simple. It's like, oh, I can just hop on Tor. I can just go use Tor and then I can talk to IRC. Uh, it's a little more complicated. Um, and so, yeah, that's just something to consider that when you go around and go, go act in these places um, and hang out, just sort of what you do. Because there are people in some of these places that are doing things that are more legal and less legal and more savory and less savory um, and more awesome and less awesome. Um, Telecomics IRC, for example, doesn't do anything illegal. That's like flat out, we just don't do that. We don't do anything violent. We don't do anything illegal. If you are too much of a pain in the neck about bringing stuff up, we just kick you off. All right? You can kick off whoever. Um, other places, yeah, it varies. It varies. Um, and so what we do is if you do in your client this command called list, you get a list of channels. Don't do this on Freenode. <laughs> There's like 30,000 channels on Freenode, and you will like just knock your client over. Um, or I think it might actually like prevent you from doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And so you'll see here we have a list of all these different channels. Yep, just slash list. There's a what? A user who needs a hug. Oh. Can you paste that to one of the channels? Just what that IRC is? That would be awesome. Um, and so <laughs> you guys might want, uh, might want to join. You'll see this first channel up here uh, is Telecom Packet to Ted which is a word in Swedish that I think means telecom package. Um, this is like the lobby. This is just like the lobby. This is where it just sort of, yeah, no, totally, it's the lobby. Welcome to the lobby. Please slash join. It's really long and complicated to type. And I think we like it that way. I don't know. It's just, yeah. Um, and so in here, there's a bunch of people. And just you know, all those people who are hanging out on these other channels, doing stuff or not doing stuff. Um, everybody just hangs. Um, including Cameron. He's our bot slash leader. <laughs> um, that really wow, bad. that's <laughs> that's perfect. Oh, sorry, I thought you said that was a real person. No, Cameron is. Oh. Remember that there was like one bot that people got annoyed with, and they figured out that it was um, Python, and they 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 typed something at it. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Um, oh gosh, what's Python IRC bot? Fenny. Oh, and so there's this cool, so if you want to write an IRC bot, like Cameron there, uh, Fenny is this cool, cool little framework for writing IRC bots, and he will, yeah, and so he ships with a Google calculator. And yeah, you know, uh, Wikipedia translation. That's actually really handy. I mean, that, that's cool. I've not actually seen that. Um, you know, so IRC is also multilingual. Different channels will actually speak different, like, will chat in different languages. Different channels will, oh, here, let's go talk with the Swedes. That'll annoy them. Yeah, that's great. I might turn that off. Oh, no. Uh, and so here we have the Viking channel, 
which is for the, my, my Swedish compatriots, uh, and they talk in Swedish here. Um, and so most channels are English on different networks, um, but you will kind of work with people who have different degrees of fluency. Um, yeah. Everybody having fun yet? Um, Bouncers. Really? This thing's called bouncers. Okay. So there's this cool thing you can do with IRC where you can like stay always logged in. So because you can connect to IRC through a shell client, a shell client. Um, RC is a really popular one. Um, and so if you keep a, sh a, cell sh a, a shell session open in a screen on the seashore, um, if you can keep a, a shell session, God, that's hard. You, you say it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if you can keep a shell open and run a screen in it, you can just keep your client open and connected. Um, you can also run basically a forwarder. It's called a bouncer that does the same thing. You leave it open on just a shell account, on just any shell account. Um, and connect to it to your GUI client. And it basically keeps you online on the network all the time. And so it's not like Jabber with, say, Google, where the ser you, you know, when you talk to Jabber, the server catches, there's a server in there. And it kind of catches those messages. And if you're not online, it can forward, save and forward them for you. There's no storage in IRC. Yeah. If somebody's not online, there's no way to send a message to them. That's what a bot is for, right? The network is stateless. The network just flings messages around. And so there's no, there's no records, there's no logs. Um, yeah. Uh, what else are we going to do? Oh, we're going to go visit Lulzsec. Uh, apparently. Oh, OK. <laughs> that. Uh, yeah. The network attack stops. It's like it's so much easier <laughs> than actually playing defense. Yeah. Just to go in and, and ask them politely to stop attacking your network. Can I just make one question here? What's yeah. the difference? I, I'm logged into the Vikings. Yeah. And it shows 12 operators and three users. Uh huh. What's the difference? Oh, operators can set the topic and they can kick us out and they can, you know. Oh, sorry. So there can be more than one operator. Oh yeah, you can have as many oh, operators okay. as you want. In this fact, this entire channel, except for me I and you. Be one operator, sorry. Oh no, I you can have lots and lots of operators. Okay. Uh, yeah. What? What's up, Boaz? Boaz. <laughs> uh, and then, and then, like, immediately the like, it, like that port closed, and then like the attack stopped. <laughs> it's like, it's like I almost opened a video window on you. <laughs> I could have cut, got a screenshot of your face. Thank you. I already screenshot your butt. Ooh, I All right. Um, I promise interesting, interesting tours. And so I want to challenge you guys to find anonymous IRC. Yeah, gonna, you, I thought you just already told us that. You just huh? For IRC. So go find it. Go find it here. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a little experiment. We're back on here, and we're going to go find anonymous IRC. We're going to be on lists. IRC 
Oh, really? You found that one already? Uh, your Google sh Google you Google an anonymous IRC and get anonops. Web IRC. Really? Is that not supposed to happen? I don't know. Oh. What do you see? I mean, what do you? Oh. Or what? Do you have a link to it? Can I take a look? No, I see the same thing you see. Right oh, okay. Now. You know, in the world of customized Google business. All right. <laughs> And that's, that's the challenge. Um, so does everybody see the first link? Have we found it yet? Is that, has anybody else logged in yet? How are you? No. You probably, I probably should warn you not to use your real. No, you should. I mean, you can. But it's that easy. Yeah. Are you doing this? Your, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> By which I meant had you found it and had you logged in on the web chat. And so I should have been more specific. Sorry. Nothing bad will happen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Oops. What is I, just doxed, I just doxed you all. I accidentally <laughs> dox caused thousands of people to dox themselves. This I'm recording. I should turn, well, but yes, but I can just turn this off. <laughs> Great. Too many unknown web connections from your IP. Oh. <laughs> no. Too many web clients. Too many web clients. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't, I can't do that. All right, so I'll leave. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shoot, this is all set up wrong. Well, actually, you can be the one who joins, and then you can just watch. Yeah. All right, I'll just do it from here. All right, fine, I'll do it from here. Here, and so I'm going to use a your connection, because we like that. No pants. It's not very, no, here, here's how. <laughs> so this is my normal site. My name is Pete. I wear pants. I'm just a dude. I'm not like some crazy internet ninja. Just a dude, except when I don't. That's my highly secret identity. And so, yeah. All right, and so these people all know me because I hang out here. But this is literally basically how I found, found Anonymous the first time. And so what channels do we have here? Is this going to work? Damn it. Why not? Anyway, web clients. Um, and so it's really that easy. Really that so easy. Which are you in by a non-net. And so, oh, okay, channels of interest. Why we protest? That's a good question. So we can click on it and we just join it. Some people's from. Oh, it's hardly broken. What? Oh, God. Anyway, is this still interesting to people, or do you want more dramatic? More drama? I want to see, like, a protest so, or something. Yeah. Well, go start one. I don't know. <laughs> I want to see one in action. I want to see one planning in action. Oh, gosh. This client just got totally broken. Are they going to shut down the earpiece? They might. 
Sure. And so we're going to organize beer over <laughs> IRC. Port forwarding. Uh, because they're on my physical keys, and I don't want to go get them out, and I happen to remember the password for that one. My SSH keys are not physically on this laptop. I happen to know what the password is. I, I once had like a whole network hack because they got into one machine that I logged in with the password, okay. and then they used that to get into all the other machines. Is uh, connecting over the web chat more anonymous than connecting over the IRC client? Uh, that's an interesting question. Who is web user? So. You trust in this case when you use this web client, uh, which is this thing. Uh, net. When you use this web client, this web client is served by Mibit, which is this company. Right, powered by Mibit. Mibit here is running your client on their server, I believe. I believe. Uh, unless this is Java, I don't really know. It is not. It is not. This is not Java. Um, And so basically, Mibit servers, uh, can see everything you do. It's not particularly anonymous. You know, if somebody knocks on Mibit's door and was like, yo, who is that dude? He was selling, he was selling his lulz bolts around the high seas, and we know. <laughs> who he is, so we can send him some nasty grams. Like, I don't know. Yeah, sure. I mean, and we're all at a conference, right? And so one of the things that people can. A laser off this window now anyway. <laughs> From way up there. Um, so one of the things that people can discern about you is even if you're not using your real name, is your IP address. And that can provide a surprisingly large amount of detail, um, even if you're just a casual user. For your, I, for your ISP, it provides a huge amount of detail because they know you, when you, know, you were using that IP address, what else you were looking at, all of your traffic. And so if you really care about you know, firing your IRC cannons at websites small and large, you want to hide that. And so that is where you can use things that are called VPNs. Yeah. Um, VPNs. Tor, there's other variety of different approaches for basically you send your network through, you know, send your traffic through some other anonymizing server or peer-to-peer -peer network before connecting. Right? Does it make any sense? We all use, I mean, Tor. How are Tor? It's easier. A lot of IRC networks block Tor because it's really, e it's hard to ban people who are abusive. So yeah, like because you're constantly, when you connect over Tor, you can just get a new IP address immediately. And so it's hard to b block abusive users. And so a lot of people just block Tor out, right? Yeah. Um, You have to trust your VPN provider the same way you would have to trust Mibit. And so, right, a VPN, I mean, does everyone know what a VPN is? 
VPN is basically you set up a virtual private network. You use encryption to send all traffic from your laptop to some server in a data center somewhere, and that is encrypted. And then the traffic comes out of that server and is sent back to you in a way that is untraceable. Right? It's like SS, it's like a it's like a giant low-level SSL proxy on all of your net traffic. Make sense? Yeah. Open VPN. Um, Yeah, yeah, and so there are a variety of different providers. I can tell you some good ones. Perfect privacy, perfect privacy is awesome. And so this is a pay company, and I pay them uh, like 15 bucks a month or whatever, and I can connect to some of their servers. So, yep, they can trace it to me, and they accept all sorts of different kinds of payments. Um, you know, everything from... Uh, I don't think they take Bitcoins. I don't think they take Bitcoins. Liberty Reserve is reasonable. Um, a lot of these things, a lot of these payment systems, you can actually buy in Europe. You can, like, walk into a 7-Eleven and get a PaySafe card for cash that you can use on the web or all over Europe. All over Europe. Web money is the lar similar concept. Uh, it's the largest payment system in Russia. Um, the U.S. is unusual in your inability to pay anonymously digitally. You know, we can talk more about that if we want to. But uh, for yeah. I just get cash cards. Yep. Yep. Um, anyway. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. So there's there's like other interesting uses for VPNs that are not um, causing havoc upon upon the internet. And and I think those things get neglected because there's like you know every once in a while somebody gets in there a huff about what people can do, you know, trading all sorts of things you're not supposed to do on the internet, you know. And that's true. Um, one of the major uses for VPNs is allowing people to get around the Chinese firewalls. Huge VPN usage in China. Um, uh, also, yeah, like you said, like watching, so certain YouTube content is blocked in certain countries. Um, That's not, uh, not really, not really. From Canada, so annoying. So much stuff that's available in the US that you can't get in Canada. Like Hulu and tons of stuff on Netflix. And yeah. Just insane amounts of stuff and it's retarded. Um, so you've got a lot of people in Canada using it. Oh, that's just Canada. That's just to watch movies and television yeah. and stuff. It's not really. You know? No, it's, uh, it's like, uh, yeah, it's, um, yeah. No, it's, uh, it has to do with, it's yeah, licensing. Like copyright licensing copyright. stuff, copyright and licensing stuff, yeah. Like, not copyright, licensing, yeah. Like, who, which networks have a license yeah. to what, which content. Um, I'll tell you sort of no worry when you built it. I mean, you talked about, like, you know, Google, like, personalizing your search results. Like, yeah. Like, a lot of times you just don't know what. Yeah. Yeah. VPNs let you experience the internet from somewhere physically else on Earth. <laughs> um, what about like uh, something like, so you're talking about VPNs, so what's the difference between a VPN and a proxy, like proxy card, the only card proxy? Uh, proxies are usually just for web traffic. Okay, VPN is like entire. Yes, yeah, VPN is lower, VPN is like level two or level three in the network so stack. You could like 